Hello, hello, hello. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, January 17th. Uh, today, code in curriculum with Chris. Let's see, is there? I didn't think of that whenever I imagined the brand. Uh, we'll be continuing to work on our web dev for beginners. Um, and I want to dive right into this and actually go ahead and square away our calendar. That way we can look at this each time without having to go all the way down here. Um, let's bring this up. Open this up. dev. Know pretty quick what we're working on. Birds with one stone. So we starting with lesson five. What we did put in the breaks every week. Plug. Bam. 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 All the way across. Entire curriculum that way. See all of this at the top of the lesson. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, now let's go. Uh, So we're looking at lesson five. Five is functions and methods. There, function and methods. Six and loops, making decisions, arrays and loops. Uh, after that, intro HTML, CSS. HTML, CSS, I always pick right now to call uh, CSS. After that, we did yesterday just JavaScript closures, and um, today's lesson 11 the event driven programming and I think we have a cool typing game yeah typing game right here about browsers APIs forms local storage about browsers forms and local storage and um, background tasks performance background tasks and performance Followed by introduction to advanced game development Ooh. on lesson 15, right here. Intro to game development, drawing to canvas, drawing to canvas, moving elements around, moving elements around. Collision detection, or collision detection, keeping score, ending condition, the ending condition, as well as templates and routes, HTML templates and routes, forms. Data and state man should have done that the very first day. Um, cool. Yeah, it looks first control update schedule push. Back. There we go. Much easier to. Happy New Year. 
to our final day, February 3rd, Lesson 24. Or, yeah, February 3rd, Lesson Cool. And since we've got that done, go ahead and get our January 17th. Lesson 11, event-driven programming. So uh, we updated schedule. We're updating logs right now. We're doing event-driven stuff, lecture. And after that, we're going to work on our homepage. And we never get any of this stuff done. I, we didn't get X done. Kind of did that. Still haven't done that. Kind of did that. Divide hero in half. We did. Okay. Uh, but uh, with our homepage today, we want to um, looking at our homepage, our coding curricula. I want to fix this icon up here in the the tab quarter. We already have it on our hero section. We've got it on our, all of our branding. You'll have to talk me out of it and how to change that now. So fix the tab icon um, we also want to uh, add a nav bar icon right here that way whenever it breaks down we can hide coding curriculum like that so um, add icon to nav bar uh, we also ought to even this out because if you go to inspect I notice they're kind of wonky. This one's a little bit shorter. Twitch is a little bit shorter than GitHub. And uh, Twitter's a little bit shorter than YouTube. We need to set min-max heights on these. So set min-max heights on um, cards. <clears throat> and then I got a good idea of what we want on the About page. About page... Should have um, mega list colon. We want um, about us, about me. What else? About us, about me. The current project that we've done. Current project we've done. Pa uh, the icon section that we've already made with links to everywhere that they can go to get in contact with us. And then after that, we want past projects that we've done together. Because this is going to be, hopefully, a years-long thing, right? So, um, about us, about me, current project, current project, icon section, past project. Okay, so, update logs. January, what? <laughs> Okay, so we've got our logs updated, sites up and good to go. Let's take a look at our curriculum. So we are on um, event-driven programming. We're going to be creating a game using events. No uh, infographic this time? Waiting. So amazing this whole time. Looks like we got a lot to code together. And we don't got time for that. <laughs> They're saying get to coding. Is there one on the next one? I have to browse ahead, but yeah, there is. I wonder if it's just not loading. Create a game using events. Um, course. You pre yeah, there's nothing. I thought this was. Oh. Okay. So let's do a pre lecture quiz. See how this turns out. Event driven programming is when a user what clicks on a button, changes a value, interacts with the page, or any of the above. Um gonna say any of the above 
And also, all right, we got it. Because it could be any of those. It sounds like event-driven, obviously linked to some sort of event that's happening on the page. Uh, big shout out, happy Tuesday. Um, in procedural programming, functions are called what? Anytime, in a specific order, or left to right. Well, it's procedural programming, so we'll avoid any time. Don't think that's it. Um, left to right's an array. So I think they might say serialized programming in that case. Um, so I guess in a specific order. Procedural programming. Okay, cool. And then uh, the universal method exposed in the DOM for registering event handlers is called what? Add event listener. Add listener or add event. It's add event listener. Type that a bunch of times. Yes. All right, cool. I'm uh, surprised we ma I made it all the way through that one no whammies without uh, any pre-lecture quiz. That's good. Let's talk about event-driven programming without the aid. Maybe I'll run this through Dolly and see if Dolly can come up with a good infographic. When creating a browser-based application, we provide a GUI, a graphical user interface, for the user. The most common way is for clicking and typing in various elements. The challenge is as a developer, we don't know when they're going to perform these operations. Event-driven programming, the name for the type of programming we need to create our GUI. We break this phase down a bit, we see the core word here is event. Oh, you're going to define it? That's okay. <laughs> Uh, something which happens. Thank you. It seems like we're going for some word count there. We know something's going to happen. Uh, so we mark the code. I mark a section of the code we want to execute is creating a function. When we think about procedural programming, functions are called in a specific order. Same thing's going to be true with event-driven programming. The difference is how the function will be called. Buttons, clicking, typing, as those events are registered, it executes in response. Numerous ways to create event listeners. There's click, there's drag, there's there's so many. Click, context menu, select, some input. Um, dozens of events. What have we got in the event reference? Animation. The animation API. Um, the board composition database, opening, closing transactions, errors, full screen, a whole API. Yeah, we touched on this before. There's a gamepad API and such. Um, some common events though. Click, definitely very common. Click here, but most often, you know, click on the submit button. You want to guide those interactions. Uh, context menu, that one, mouse event, UI event, the event, select, select some text on select, select, sample triggers, try selecting some text in this element. Logs it. Okay. Selected this. Selected. Logging what you selected right here. Cool. Okay. So we're going to create a game that explores how events work in JavaScript. Our game is going to test a player and typing skill, which is one of the most underrated skills all developers should have. So in this game, the player clicks on a start button and is presented with a quote to type. The player types the quote as quickly as they can in the text book box. As each word is completed, the next one is highlighted. If the player has a typo, the text box 
text box is updated to red when the player completes the quote the success message is displayed with the elapsed time okay get going so we'll start in our command terminal terminal window i want to cd desktop forward slash coding no coding it wants us to And it wants us to make directory of the typing game and then change directory into the typing game. Now we're there in the typing game. And then once we're in the directory for the typing game, then code dot the directory for the typing game. Add three files to the folder in the Visual Studio Code with the following names. So we want the index.html, a scripts.js, and a style.css. Got our three files. I don't think we'll need any more. We can just leave these open for now. So let's create the user interface. If we explore the requirements, we know we're going to need a handful of elements on our HTML page. What are we going to need? Um, somewhere to display the quote, somewhere to display any message like a success, a text box for typing, and a start button. So starting where we're going to lay the foundation, using our emit, we'll do an exclamation point and send that, and get back a full HTML document and call it a uh, typing game in the title. And let's see in the head, relation, bring in our style sheet, where we say link. Relation style, style.css, that's good. And then our body, one h1, says typing game. Um, under there, we would like a p, says practice your typing skills with a quote from. Sherlock Holmes. Click start. And um, want a another P with ID of quote. This is where what will be displayed here. And then now we want another P with an ID of a message. And the message will just be displayed here. And then next we need another div. Inside that div we need an input and a button. Let's do a div with a input. With an ID of height value and an ARIA label of current word. Then a button with an ID of start. And a type of button here. Type button. And this is to start the game. If we save that, open with live server. We have the game working right here. And that's rendered up. I don't want to say perfectly, but, you know, looks good to me. But doesn't do anything yet. And it wouldn't do anything 
until we actually import our JavaScript. So let's call our script tag right there. It's got it from src script.js. Let's be sure to say in this directory forward slash that script.js. Save. Then now we can do JavaScript. Let's go ahead and check our um, CSS. Make sure it's wired up pr properly by saying, hey, uh, background color red. Oh, that's script. Sorry. Whoops. That in style. Background color red. Oof. It burns. Okay. <laughs> Cut that. And then what about now where we inspect console? Right. Then console log hello world. Logs there. So good, we properly imported our um, our styles and our JavaScript. Just don't really have anything there yet. But the HTML, the foundation of our game, is there. And thanks so much, viewer, for uh, tuning in. Say hello. Um, if you don't mind in the chat, what we're doing, and I'm don't mind uh, sharing the link to the lesson we're on right there. It's Web Dev for Beginners, Lesson 11, and we're making a typing game. We've completed the HTML now. Like it says right here, just launching the application with live server and it works. Now it wants us to style it. So let's go ahead and style. With our HTML created, let's add CSS for core styling. We need to highlight the word the player should be typing and colorize the text box if what they've typed is incorrect. We'll do this with two different classes. One is a highlight, one is an error. That makes sense. So, um, I don't know. Let's just go ahead and do the uh, margin zero, padding zero, box sizing zero. And before I save that, so you can see what that does, it's pretty standard in CSS, is save. Mashes everything kind of up and to the right. Removes all of the margin and the padding. It also gives you the ability to um, style a border on all of it, like one pixel by default, even though you can't see it. Let's call uh, the class of highlight. Give it a background color of yellow. And we want an error. The background color, or no, let's... Um, background color of something you can see aqua and maybe like a border Just say red that give us however many pixels by default so we've got the syntax highlight background color so when it comes time when it comes to css you can lay out your page however you like Take a little time and make the page look a little more appealing. So it wants us to style this a little better. We don't have anything styled yet. So uh, let's just say our body. What do we want to do? Body. Balls get. Okay. Then um, let's put this in a container. Div with a class of container. That. Prettier formatting. Save. Style the dot container. That's right there. Um, then let's say H1. Typing game. What do we got after that? Um, H1 was a class of, let's give it, didn't have any. So let's just call it instruction. Save and then your dot instruction start and uh, quote in the message. So the quote's going to be interjected right here or injected right here. It says yet to be rendered. What we're typing. I don't know how to render that yet. Um, let's 
What about our type text? The ID of typed value. So we can grab that with. It's actually typed value. And then the start button. ID of start. Okay. Pretty good. And then we maybe need something with the current word. ID typed value, message, quote. Eh, let's hold off. That looks better for now. Let's see exactly what we're typing. Okay. Um, so we've done our homework. Now let's do some JavaScript. So we need to create the constants, event listener to start the game, and the event listener to start typing. But first, create a new file called script.js. We have that. Our script.js and it's registering echo or uh, hello world. We're good there. So we're going to need a few items to make our lives a little easier through the programming. Uh, they don't want us to do an API call or any API fetches. So they're going to do some quotes. So let's, an array with a list of all quotes. So let's say const quotes equals array, array, semicolon. Let's break this up. Is that going to be an object? Nope. There, that's the, we'll call that enough. How many more? Okay, that's enough quotes. We'll save that. We got quotes. Okay, an empty array to store all the words for the current quote. So that's right here. Let words equal an empty array. Let words equal an empty array. A space to store the index of the word the player is currently typing. So that would be word index of zero. By default, let word index equal zero by default because if it's working through an array, it's going to start at that zero position. But, um,. We're going to update and increment that with every single clackety clack 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 of the keyboard. We're going to increment that value. What's going to happen, I'm sure. Uh, and the time the player clicks start. So that's easy. Let's start time date now, right now. Um, before, we're also going to want to reference the UI elements right here where we have the text box type value. So const of quote element going to be doc document get element by id quote good okay um the message element and also the type to value element got all those quote message type value get element by id all three very good so we more or less set up our data structure right here. The arrays of quotes that we'll be drawing upon, a place to put the words that we're checking, the word index of the letter that we're currently on, where we started, and that'll allow us to compute how much we've done in the time since we've hit the start button. Go ahead and add more quotes to your game. We've done that. Take a minute on a, to watch a video on using const, let, and var. Um, I won't, please watch the video in your own time. I won't make you watch it, but var is more or less deprecated. Constant let are preferred because of scope to begin the game. See if, we, and we actually save this, nothing's changed. We haven't made any changes ever. But, um, we need to add some start logic. To begin the game, the player will click on start. Of course, we don't know when they're going to click start. This is when an event listener comes into play. An event listener will allow us to listen for something to occur and execute the code in response. When we click start, we select the quote, set up the user interface, 
instead of tracking for the current word and timing. So at the end of the JavaScript, start with our document get element by ID document element by ID add the list nerve click Oof. fill out everything huh? that's easier than copying and pasting but um, so we can work through this real quickly where we get the quote where we take the math floor of a random number with the quote length so this is randomly selecting which quote we get out of the array right here that way it's not just the first one the next one and so forth then they're splitting each word and resetting the word index to zero it updates the ui with the span of words as a function of word adds the elements it's adding the words and it's calling highlight it's giving it the class name of highlight as we're working on it Enter text is nothing, type value of nothing until we set focus and then start the timer. What happens? Wants to give you a breakdown of the code. Um, the one thing that I don't mind admitting that I haven't worked with too much on is this focus. Focus option method HTML or SVG element focus on it so I guess that's the event see okay start and every time we hit the start button it calls a new quote when you reach but we don't have any logic to handle the typing itself yet so let's add some typing logic at the end of the script, the typed value element, which remember is type value element, our type value right here, what we put in here. So let's go ahead and grab that. Typed value element on that passing in the input. It's going to give us all of the logic right here, save us a bunch of typing. And I'll save us some time together because we want to be able to work on the web page, but the quote is complete indicated by the type value the word is complete by setting the class name and highlighting flag and if we made this far and we have an error then it shows an error so let's save refresh start when you reach the end i'll mess this one up oh your and then it won't go any further okay cool of your rope tie a knot a knot in it and hang on okay and it even gives us a fun little congratulations message this would be a good time to style let's go ahead and style it while we got it um because that's with the class name of message quote and a class name of message or ID or ID okay of quote cool and then uh, an ID of message I don't know about that ugly uh font size padding can we get rid of the height The border. We zoom out a little bit. That might look okay. Typing games working. Then test your application. So you made it to the end. The last step is to ensure our application works. Give it a shot. Click the start and start typing away. Ours looks a good deal better than theirs. So let's refresh one more time. Let's start. Okay. Say the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Cool. 
Typing game looks like it works for me. That was some good practice. What did we learn? Let's see. Um, challenge. Add more functionality. Disable the input listener on completion and re-enable it when the button is clicked. Okay, let's try to do that. Um, here, let's just copy and paste. <laughs> See if the AI gives it to us. See if we got a winner. Or we would actually put this um, on inside the start button, right? After the start time. So we cut that. This would happen after that. No, I want to do that. It doesn't want to give it to me. So I would render it, and I would say if it's clicking down, then it do this. Otherwise, don't do that. Disable the text box when the player completes the quote. Disable the mobile di uh, dialogue and store high scores using local storage. That is all some excellent homework, but um, I don't think we've got time for homework. We need to get into our... Uh, our homepage because I got some stuff that I want to do in there but this was fun cool typing game um, what's next uh, calculator or uh, <laughs> uh, our next assignment because I think this typing game was just one day thing next time or our next project is this browser extension this is what I'm really excited about we have a lesson tomorrow about browsers then API's and forums and local storage and background tasks and performance I know I'll learn something in here um but let's work on our coding curriculum while we got an opportunity so just top coding uh experimenting with some animated icons um npm start but I backed it all up. No, I don't need, need to level these things out before we do any of that. So if we inspect the page, what is it? It's a little too low, and our Twitter is a little too low. We need to fix both of those. That's in our icon section. That These are just the cards, right? So we would set the card height and width so hero section home page card what happens some of this last time it was a bit of a nightmare you want their height, see, that looks good, but it's whenever you go to this. So position relative, what happens? And okay, position relative didn't make everything fall apart. Um, how about height? Height. Values here, so give me some values. Okay. And that's not um, 11m. Great. Uh, let's say with 5m height, maybe 11m. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's say maybe 15. That's better. That's too much. Maybe we were on something with 10. And then height needs to be like 20. Height needs to be like 30. <laughs> uh, 25. Better. Or all 22.5.
here. Oh. So. We would say. Want this to be the width min width, right? That way, it's like that, we're good. How are we doing? Similarly, that's too long on desktop. So we would want this to be min height. Or max height. Like that, that's good. But see, then it. So now we want a min height too. We need a min height and a max height for um, desktop version. So min height, make it just slightly more. Or, yeah. That arbitrary min height, max height. Okay, that looks tighter. How's it going? The other one. Ah, that's where we started. <laughs> what if I just give it a default? Well, okay. What about the height? Like twenty. <laughs> Does nothing for it. Make it work. Um. But getting rid of these. All right. That height. bit more uh, well this mobile mm, 25 now this is where did we go wrong okay Want the height of the card on mobile. Are we going to have to set a mobile breakpoint? I've been my best. What happens if we just roll with the flow here? happens <laughs> I see not good there but not terrible I mean I think it's at this point it's just used because <laughs> after all that it didn't do anything what about height? Content. Five REM. Oh, 
not worth fighting over so much today. Not whenever we got other stuff to do. Okay. So let's do something, I guess, easy. Let's fix this uh, logo here in the corner. Where this should be for public. It's your logo this, logo that. We're just going to copy and paste. And remember, let's call these 192 and 512. Paste that twice. Rename or delete these. Delete these. Uh, just call these. Rename logo five one two and rename logo one nine two. Fresh this. I think we need to recompile everything. Start that to work. Doesn't like it. Not. Babe. Go one nine two up here. Literally the exact same. Rename the and three. These things, they need to be converted. Oh, where is it even uh, manifest JSON? Calling it. Start. Still wanting to give us the React icon. Not a big deal. We'll fight with that later. Let's uh, get it up in the navigation bar. It's probably just start. It'll be um, our components are navbar.js. We want to insert an image. So let's react bootstrap image to see how we do that image. Good, good rounded circles, thumbnail. Need image from react bootstrap image right here. Then an image will go. We need it to go right here. Image wants to make a call to WordPress. Let's see where that goes. Why not? There's no coding curricula.com WP content. I'm not going to go. Yeah. But if we change the source. Did us a bunch of favors right there. That wasn't useless. Let's change the source. 
where the source actually needs to be import image. Import logo from where do we have that? Side of our SRC logo two P. logo there we go we won one cool got that there I want to make these spin and I want to animate them and do some fun stuff with them later on um, but that's step in the right direction How's it look on mobile? Pretty good. What we'd expect. And, um, land desktop. Okay, maybe make it a, a hair bigger. Width 30, height 30, 45, 45. A little too. That's pixel. And we may even want it to where it, if it toggles into mobile, we get rid of um, words that the icon. But I've thought about doing. I'll tell you what we can do. These um, icon sections are going to keep driving me nuts. What we could do is we could just make them a touch long. Like, Which give that break between Twitter break to Twitter. That's not a good idea typically because you're you're not working like an Excel spreadsheet or an you know, a Word document, right? Like the boom. There it immediately doesn't line up anymore. Got to be with the YouTube and everything else, right? So we would need to add one to all of them. And then we add one to all of them, and all of a sudden it's out of control, and you're having to bump everything down. So we just need to set some min max heights on that. That's a bad idea. Get rid of that. That. Okay, so it looks good here. Mobile media query. So, what we're saying here with this media query, and you want to avoid these <laughs> to the best of your ability, is if and only if this is true, then this is what gets rendered. And so we're saying if the max width it's something like 600 pixels, which any cell phone should only be, you know, 400 pixels or so wide. If and only if that's true, then it'll render this, these sorts of styles in which we say, here, let's turn on our, which we'll say our min height is, how many did we say? 15 rem. Thirty. Too much. I think we said like twenty-three. Okay, twenty-three. Twenty-two. A little bit off. Twenty-two point five. Bit off. I guess twenty-three. Twenty-three. Nice and square to me. By all accounts. And right there, we're still good. On mobile, and what about on desktop? And on desktop. So now we need to square it away on desktop and say if it's greater than this, 
then it needs to be this long. So now we say uh, mobile media query, desktop media query, and we want to say if it's at least 1200 pixels, right? 1200 pixels. Then the uh, min height less. You can go less still with that. And say it's like 18. 18. Tighter. Good. So how are we looking? Okay. So tab, like a tablet, looks all right. Mobile looks good. And desktop also. Okay. Clean that up a little bit, but oh. And I don't know why we're calling this like homepage card. Like we should probably just have its our own styling for this um our own style sheet for these cards, especially if we're gonna be reading like we plan to in the about section. Um, let's see what we can do. Are we going to get anything done in the about section? What did we have? What did we aspire for? Uh, we have a container that says about. That's sad. Um, so about us. We want about us. And then we want a row, column, mission, uh, Column, column, our vision. Oh, what's our vision? Oh, I missed our values. Those are important. All I had to say there. Nothing else to say? So good. Uh, what did it render in the about section? Okay. Not bad. Do we have time to bring in some icons? Do we want to bring in some icons? Like to bring in some photos, but hey, that looks better. I don't even want to play with that. That's pretty good. Privacy policy content about contact. I think is all we're missing. Okay, yeah. Mission accomplished. What was the one thing we didn't get done? And I, our our icon up here in the corner. That's kind of silly, but we'll we'll take a look at it next time. I'm missing something. Everything look on desktop. Good about more full. Okay. Um. About mobile. Where about okay. I'll see. Wonky. Put that in that in the Um privacy. Page. Import all that stuff from React Boot. Uh this a container. Immediately squares it up a little bit better. That can still be an H1. And then each of these. I don't know. Let's see what happens. I just want to type more. So we would say this would be a. Uh, a row, right? Column. Introduction. Got all sorts. Now we'll just stop there.
cleaned up and squared away. And next time we'll put this into um like here will be a row, here will be a row. That way it's not all centered. Weird like this. Left align it to make it look a little more legal. Alright. Well, those uh that was a fun session. We got a bunch done. I'm feeling better about the website. Like we already said, next time, um, that was the entire typing game. We knocked out about 30 minutes. Next time we start our green browser extension, which will uh, carry us through till the end of the week. This will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to learn all about browsers, API forms, and local storage, and doing some background tasks while we continue to... Uh, I need to spin up a server to empower or enable this um, contact form that we'll make together, and then... Uh, you and my audience, you can reach out to me one-on-one -on -one if you want to. I'm looking forward to that and hearing from the community what we do. And then also fixing that icon like we kind of struggled with earlier. Well, that's all the time I got. Thanks so much. Have a happy Tuesday, and I hope to see you the rest of the week. Bye-bye.